Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Energy Play Shop number 65. It is October the 5th, 2023. So we're going to talk about how to connect with the body. And um, I, I envisioned tonight's play shop wouldn't be a lot of, like, I don't want to be talking a lot because it's, it's, Connecting with the body is not something that um, meets a lot of words. It's more of practice. So really feeling how what it feels like to be connected with the body. So that's what my I want to do is to just have a little bit of a history about what um, what our body actually is, and then just go into um, ways of connecting with our body. And before we do that, I want to actually take everybody into a brief meditation to just get present. So let's let's do that together. So take a deep breath in. And let it all go. Take another deep breath in, through the nose. And when you can breathe in no more, then start to breathe out through your nose as well. And then breathe in one more time deeply. And let it all go. Continue to follow the rhythm of your own breathing with the intention of elongating your breath as much as it is still comfortable for you. Use your breath. Your breath is always with you. It is a great tool to use your breath to just connect it with your body and to get in this moment. So as you breathe slowly through your nose, also set the intention that you want to call back all parts of yourself. Because during the day, we send our attention, intention, and energies out into the world, into our lives, into connecting with the people, places, and things around us. In this moment, though, call back all of those to yourself. Come back to yourself. Use your breath to assist you as you breathe in, just call back. When you breathe in, breathe in all of your own energy back in again. And as you breathe out, let go of anything that is distracting you away from this moment. When you set your intention to come back to yourself, you feel the difference. How does it feel? It really depends on each person. Some may feel like there is more energy within themselves. Some may feel that there is a warm, and some may feel that there seems to be more of a weight, more like a column of energy that is within the middle of their body. However you feel it is perfectly okay. When you feel the more of yourself, is back within yourself and just 
focus on being with you, being with your body, being with this moment. As much as possible, let go of any thoughts and just be with yourself this moment. Relax your body as much as possible. And you will know it when you feel like you are alive, more of yourself and in this moment. And when you feel that, and just take a deep breath in. Let it all go and come all the way back into this moment. Welcome back. So um, let me just adjust my view. Make sure that I'm not going to pin myself. Make sure I am doing okay. Wonderful. So that's um. Let's start. So first, before I talk more about connecting with the body, I just want to have a, a very brief um history of what what a body really is. Well, history may not be the the right word for it because um, it's really how our body came to be, as I understand it. Um, doesn't mean that it is true, just, just that this is my understanding for now. It may change in the future, but for now, my understanding is that we actually <clears throat> started out as just consciousness, nothing else. We're just thoughts, we're just thought patterns. So within the universe, there is this, there are thoughts. And then after a while, consciousness decided that it wants to feel, it wants to experience, it wants to play. So in order to do that, it has to figure out a way to create a vessel or vehicle for the consciousness to be able to experience, to feel something. And so the, the consciousness figure out a way, somehow figure out a way to be able to use um, sacred geometry to create a vessel. And the, the, in the beginning, the vessels are very different from, from the body that we know in this moment. Um, we were, we used to be just, uh, at first it's, it's like we rocks, not even a small rock, but you know, big planet size, rocks but it's not just um it's not just a hunk of rock it's actually a vessel for consciousness and then consciousness just decides to play with each other it's like okay how how can i play let's let's give this planet um different properties so things like we we can have gravity, we can have an orbit, we have things like um, we can create um, our own body by volcanic eruptions. All of that. And then we experience all in different ways. We are the planet. We are also the volcano. Volcano. We also the ocean. We also be the, the small rocks. We also the each of the different minerals. So 
all of that evolved through millenniums and millenniums until at some point these vessels decided, mm, okay, I'm ready for the next next level. So next level we started to create vessels that can actually move around a bit more because rocks don't really move too much. Maybe lava can move, but not really rocks. And then we start to evolve and create vessels that can move. At first, they are just vegetation, which can move, but very slowly. Then we became, we created um, vessels like amoebas, just single cell organism, being able to move. And then those single cell organisms start to coalesce together and we become bigger vessels like a fish, like a cat, like a dog, a wolf, and then bigger and bigger. Some vessels stay in the water, some vessels can actually walk on the ground. Some actually evolved to be able to fly. So all of these different um, evolution of different vessels. And then our consciousness also evolve as well until we get to a point where something that is similar to human beings started to exist on this planet. It actually existed on many other planets for much longer, but in, on this planet, it started to exist. And then from there, we evolved and evolved until here we are today and we have a body. And we think of our body as being um, unique, distinct from other things. And we think that this body is us, is actually no. We are consciousness, we are everything, we are everywhere. We have a body so that we can have a specific kind of experience through this body. And when we want to have different experiences, then we drop this body and we take on another body or different kinds of body. So that's really what the, um, I would say, my understanding of the evolution of body is that it's just a vessel for consciousness. And um, the next part I want to talk about is really going into, so how do we actually connect with our body? And I... And I look at it and I, I said this um, as though, you know, well, you know, we are our body. What do you mean by connecting with our body? We are connected. Yes, we definitely are connected. However, our um, in our conscious mind, because we see, or at the very least in, in um, third dimension, for the longest time because we rely on our senses and our senses kind of uh, especially our visual sense we see that okay i have this body and someone else has another has another body and our body does not um are not linked together in any way that we can see and so we were at some point of our evolution we we're somehow conditioned to think that we are not connected, that we are not connected to our environment, we are not connected to one another, which is only, we're only able to have that perception because our senses are very uh, narrowed. So 
if we have a much more expanded senses, if we can actually see energy, we can actually see that you know, energetically, even though our physical body may look separate, it may feel very different. I, I cannot feel what someone else is going through. No matter how much they try to explain it to me, I, I, I don't. I may get some idea in it, drawing from my own experience, but I, I really don't feel what they felt. So that is because of our limited senses. Our senses has been limited. However, if our senses were much more expanded, if we were much more um, sensitive, we could actually feel what other people are feeling, physically feel what they are feeling. And that's, that's from the perspective of a, an ex, expanded senses. We're getting to that, but for now, uh, while we were transitioning from third dimension to fifth dimension, which is where we actually regain the a much bigger, wider range of our senses. We actually gain extra senses. So the, that's the reason why we need to connect with our body again because we because we were conditioned to think that we are the body and it's actually the other way around we're actually consciousness and then um, because of the way we play in 3d is that consciousness and bodies start to have all these different ideas and they kind of become um, antagonistic to each other. The body would feel that, okay, I'm more important. And the spirit would feel that, okay, spirit is more important. And which is just, it's great. We had fun playing that game. And now we're coming to the, the part where we need to make that bridge to realize that we are, we are both. We are really spiritual beings experiencing our reality through this body. So it's not either or, it's that we're both. We are much more than, than the body we see. So that's why the um, theme for tonight is really to connect with our body again. And, and why is that important now? Because the energies are very supportive of us making that transition. The energies is really high and it's actually pushing the body to um, get rid of all the things that are uh, things and by things I mean thoughts, beliefs, uh, thought forms, all of that, that does not support this unity between spirit and matter. So the energy is really pushing the body, is really pushing against us. That's why the when you look out in the world, there seems to be so much disagreement is because this is this is all happening. Everything is, is being shaken. All all the things that we used to take for granted. Now everything is just shaken up and we are being asked to look at our relationship with everything, with our environment, with our body, with each other. We are being asked to take a second look at it and really feel into the connection between us rather than to focus on the disconnection, which is only visual. We are only disconnected because of the limitation of our senses. So that's why it's actually very important to connect with our body now because our body, yes, our body has a basic um, operating system, which is 
uh, our primary directive of the body is to keep us alive because as long as we are alive we can make other changes we can learn we can we can um find new ways to do things better to to become a better version of ourselves and that's what the body is here for the body is for us to experience so the prime directive of the body is to stay alive however <clears throat> We, uh, our mind, though, has a very different idea of what what is important to us. Some for some people, what's more important to them than than their survival is looking good, being able to look good. For them, it's very important to look good because if you look good, then you liked by people. You um, other people would support you more. You get and attract you would be able to attract a mate and all these things so we attached a lot of things other than what actually is um sustaining our body to to survive we have attached a lot of other things which is not really primary for for the body but we attach those important things for example being able to you know, work hard um, at a job, yes, our body, but you know, our body needs to rest. So yes, you can work hard. The body will support you. However, you can only work hard to a certain extent for a certain time period before the body becomes exhausted. So there's this divergent of um, the prime directive. So prime directive of a human being trying to stay alive and the body trying to keep us alive so that we can still be in this game. They all, sometimes they don't um, end up in the same um, direction. Another example I can give is um, food. Ice cream tastes really good. But is it good for your body? Well, if you have ice cream once in a while, it probably is fine. But if you have ice cream all the time, then, you know, all that sugar and um, fat and all that dairy may not be good for you. So what is what our palate enjoys, uh, our experience uh, of enjoying good food? versus what food actually is nutritious, actually support the body, is not always the same. So that's why it is important in this stretch of our journey to connect with the body, to be able to support our body, because more and more energy is coming in. And it is, and our body is doing a lot to let go of the old programs. And that really involves in clearing a lot of blockages that we have um, accumulated in our body. <clears throat> so that is why it's important to connect with our body. And... um Let's see, connecting with our body. I've already mentioned that food as communication. When you communicate with your body, you're actually connecting with your body. So one of the ways that we have been communicating with our body is through food. That's why um, people sitting together to have like, families, friends, sitting together having a meal is kind of very important in a lot of cultures. It's because food is really how we communicate with our body. However, communication with our body is not just food, through food. It's also through ideas, also through the things that we look at, that we choose to look at the things that we choose to 
feel all of that emotions that we choose to um, exist in to to stick or stay around with us if we always choose to feel emotional and being up and down in emotionally it it actually takes a toll on the body yes it may not be very um i would say it, your life may not be very interesting if you always even keel nothing up nothing down always peaceful yes it may it may be good for your body but it may not be for some people it may not be very exciting so it's it's really to um, have a balance. So a few few other ways that you can use to connect with your body besides food. The the first thing we already have uh, we are, we already practiced is really through breathing. So when we have our short meditation, I mentioned that when you elongate your breath, when you really take your time to breathe in and allow your lungs to fully expand. And then as you breathe out, you allow your lungs to fully collapse again. And when you do that, it is actually a a signal to your body that you're in a safe space because it's only when you are feeling safe, when your environment is safe, when you can actually breathe, you can take your time to breathe in and out. Because when you're in fight or flight mode, your breathing is um, much more rapid and um, all of that. Why? Because physiology, that's what it takes in order to pump more oxygen in your body and all of your muscles so that you're ready for action. On the other hand, when you elongate your breath, you actually let your body know that is so, and you're no longer in fight or flight mode. And that is important because our body has primary function. It knows, it, it already knows how to, excuse me, the body itself you don't have to tell the body, okay, breathe. You don't, you don't ever have to tell your body, breathe. You may um, tell your body how to breathe, how to slow down your breath. But you don't really need to tell the body what to do. It's like you don't tell your body to say, grow hair. Or um, blink your, uh, your right and left eyes. So those are things that your body knows. It, it has it does not need you to give any directions for it so your body has a a set of uh, automatic functions that it knows how to do and it also has different strategies to assist you when you are in fight or flight mode then you breathe differently your body knows to pump all sorts of adrenaline into your body so that you're ready for action all that all that your body knows so your body is a very intelligent vessel however no no matter how intelligent the vessel is is when you put your body in fight or flight mode for an extended period of time because um the body's prime directive is to protect your mind protect protect your mind protect your heart protect your nervous system because if you just look at your own body you have a skull and within the skull is your brain so you know do you see any other part of your body that actually is shaped like that not really when you look at your arms the, the muscle is the muscle is wrapped around your bones but when the bone, which is your skull, is wrapped around your brain, you know that your brain is actually an important part because your physiology already tells you that. And also your heart is important because you have all these um, bones across your body and then you have, you have this, the, the, 
the backbone all there. It is there to protect the heart and the nervous system that is throughout your body is actually being protected by your spine, like the, the nervous all the nerves is actually within the spine itself is very well protected. And that is physiology because those are the things that are really important in order for you to play and stay in this game and play. So that's that's why your body is the way it is. However, when you are always in fight or flight mode, then that means your body has to do extra things. It has to detour. Because normally it's protect the heart, protect the brain, protect the nervous system. But when you're in fight or flight mode, it does not matter. It will um, pump all of these different <clears throat> hormones into you, your body. Uh, you will have to, you breathe differently. All of this is something that is not not routine, not normal, not what it is that's important to protect the, the brain, the heart, and the nervous system. When you're always in the fight or flight mode, you actually take your body out of its normal function and you are and the body is actually accommodating you. So depending on your lifestyle, you may be actually your lifestyle may be putting your body at risk, um, not immediately, but over a long period of time. That's why there's a lot of there's a lot of these um, not really chronic. Uh, what I was yes, definitely chronic um, illness. So it's it's not acute. Right? That's what I'm trying to say. Not acute illness. That will kill you not really because our body knows how to get us out of those but when we put our body into fight or flight mode in a long period of time then these chronic illness start to come in because the body has to choose okay do i <clears throat> do i um go with the fight or flight mode or do i and, and give this person chronic illness, or do I not um, do any fight or flight mode, and the, this person may not be able to rise up to the occasion in order to um, stay alive and stay safe long enough. So that's what your body is doing automatically behind the back. So when you actually take the time to elongate your breath, to really do these deep breathing in and out, to reset your body and take your body out of fight or flight mode so that your body can go back to normal functioning. If it still remembers what normal functioning is, then your body actually can start to heal itself because our body is designed to do just that. It's designed to heal itself unless we have to fight a tiger or do work or do other things that, in our opinion, is a fight or flight situation. <clears throat> the first thing that we can do to connect back with our body is through our breath. So let's just do a little bit of that for now. Just take a few moments to just breathe in slowly through our nose. And when we can breathe in no more, then we can start to breathe out slowly. And just do that for 10 breaths. Let's, let's do 10 breaths and see if you can feel the difference.
Did you feel the difference? I hope you can. But that is the difference when you can actually take yourself out of fight or flight mode. There is a big difference and your body can feel that. And so the next thing is to actually do something that I call a body scan. So just using our breath is, our breath is always with us. So using our breath is perfect. However, when you want to do something that's a little bit deeper, then the next thing you can do is what I, what I would call a body scan. So a body scan is something that I, um, <clears throat> need to st demonstrate for you. Um, this is something that I actually went, that I have introduced um, a while back. I forgot how, how long. I think maybe um, in maybe the four, fourth or fifth energy play shop. So it's been a while. It's just been <clears throat> quite a number of it may have been a year ago. So let's do this again. This is a body scan. So I um, just want to introduce a few things. Uh, concept first. So we our body actually has um, a yin side and a yang side. So for example, our arm. The, the part of our arm that actually um, faces the sun, like when we walk out in the streets and it faces the sun, the sun can actually hit on it. That's the yang side. And if you flip it over, that's the part of the, the of your arm that don't usually get any sunshine, unless, of course, if you lay out and try to um, and flip your arms over, then you get some sun. But normally, if you're just walking in the streets, then this side of your body, of your your arm, does not receive any sun. So this is the yin side. That's what I mean by a yang side and a yin side. So this is kind of important when I demonstrate what the, the body scan is. So the body scan is really um, start with just putting your both of your hands together around your heart area. So just tune in to your heart first. Tune in to your heart. Just take a couple of moments to just tune into your heart. So you can um, couple that with elongating your breath. When you feel yourself calming down, and your thoughts are more calm as well. When you feel that stillness within your body, then just focus on your heart. Drop down into your heart. And stay here for a bit. When you stay here, 
and you really feel that connection with your heart, then you can begin. You can begin by just picking a hand. So for me, I'm going to unfold my left hand. So what I want to do is using my right hand, I would go from my heart out to have my palm facing the yin side of my left arm. And I would just go over it. I'm not touching my arm, but I'm maybe about an inch away. Just going through all the way into, until I reach palm. So my right palm is on top of my left palm. And when those two palms meet, then what I do is I flip over my left arm because I'm using my right arm now to do most of the work. And the left arm is just there to receive. So now I start to move my right arm. Now I'm going through the yang side of my left arm all the way until I get up to my shoulders and then neck area and then I come all the way back into my heart. And then now I do the other side. I, I use my left hand to go over my right so then I would just extend my right hand with the yin side of my arm facing up. And then I would go from heart up to shoulder area using my palm facing the yin side of my right arm. And just following the, the yin side of my right arm all the way until I reach my palm. So my left palm is now on top of my right palm. And that's when I flip my right palm over. And now I start to move my left palm and just feel the yang side of my body all the way up. I'm about an inch away without touching. Going to the neck and shoulder area and then coming all the way back into my heart. So that's what I mean by body scanning. Okay. So let's do this again. And this time, the first time we do it, the emphasis is on, like when I'm using my right arm to go over my left arm, emphasis is on feeling, using my palm as though my right palm can sense, can pick up whatever it is that I need, needed to pick up. So I'm communicating with my body using my palms. Okay, so let's do this again, using my right palm. I have my left arm expanded. And I'm just gonna, from here I'm sensing so my right palm, this one here that's moving, is sensing my heart. And then it starts to go up. And it's not just moving. I'm actually paying attention to what my right palm is sensing. And I'm just sensing all using my right palm. 
whatever it is that I can feel, it's okay. You don't need to know what it means. It is simply a communication that you're communicating with your body. That's what about, that's what the connection is about. So going through the yin part of my left arm, using my right palm, and I'm concentrating on my right palm. Really picking up whatever it is that my right palm can sense until my right palm is on top of my left palm. And then I flip this over and I feel what I can feel with my right palm. And just feel that. And now you use your right palm to go over your left palm's yang side. And you may feel something, or you may not. It's okay. Just do it very slowly. It is about connection. So it's not about diagnosing. You're not trying to diagnose yourself. Nothing like that. You're just communicating with your body. Just using your palms. And I promise you, if you really do this, if you really focus on it, you would sense a change of the state of your mind when you really do this. Not just fake doing it, but actually try to do it. Actually focusing on your palm, communicating with your other arm. Okay, so now let's do the same hand again, but this time the emphasis is different. The emphasis is not on the right palm now. So emphasis is on the left palm. So you're switching. So you're still using your right palm to go over your left palm, but now you're noticing what your left palm feel. Can your left palm feel? your right, I mean, can your left arm feel your right palm as you go over it? So that's a different sensing. So start the same, using your right palm, sense your heart, and then just go move over the left shoulder until you start to sense. Go the yin side of your left arm. And now this time you focus on the left arm. See if you can feel your right palm and what it is doing as it goes over your left arm. And when your right palm and your left palm come together, and you flip over. And now you use the yang side of your left arm to feel what it feels like when your right palm goes over it. You may be able to feel something, or you may not. That's, but that's not really important. The importance is to focus on that communication. You feeling a state change now? It's it's one of the um, say one of the simplest way 
that I'm aware of to completely change your state of mind when you really start to communicate with your body. It's just so very simple. So this body scan can actually go through the head and also go through the, the, the legs as well. <clears throat> However, I think just just by going through the the arm scanning, the yin and the yang side, it already gives you a taste of what that body scan is like. And the next one now, um, which is coming up. Okay, actually, just want to stop here for a bit to so that we can um, have a separate recording. <clears throat> 